Welcome to Caregiver Chats. Today, I'm talking about meaningful engagement for dementia caregivers. So stay tuned and we'll get into it. Hi, Dr. Lakeland here. I'm a gerontologist and caregiving advocate for Home Instead, an honor company. I am really excited to talk all about meaningful engagement for those living with Alzheimer's or another type of cognitive impairment or dementia. Meaningful engagement can be a great way to interact with the person that you're caring for. So caregivers, today I'm going to be talking with a special guest all about ideas for meaningful engagement. I am so excited to be joined today by my friend Loretta Vini. Loretta is an incredible person, so full of joy and positivity. She was a family caregiver for her mom who passed away from Alzheimer's and is also a dementia advocate, author, inspirational speaker, and trainer. When I think about meaningful engagement and activities for dementia care, I think of her, and I cannot wait for our discussion. Welcome, Loretta. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hello, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. I was looking so forward to this. <laughs> me too. Oh, it's always a good day when I get to talk to Loretta. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I'm excited to talk all about meaningful activities, but before we jump in, I thought it could be helpful for our listeners just to get to know you a little bit. Uh, so would you mind sharing a little bit about yourself, your caregiving journey, uh, and all of the great work that you're doing in kind of the advocacy and bringing joy uh, space? Yes, absolutely. So my mom, Doris, was diagnosed with dementia in uh, 2006. And you're like, oh, and, you know, obviously that's such a devastating disease. But, you know, one of the ways to look at it, too, is like, OK, I'm going to find some joy in this. People are like joy, dementia, those two things don't go together. But, hey, you know, I was going to try it. So we had been, you know, so close and, you know, always had a lot of fun together. And I didn't see any reason to stop that <laughs> when she got dementia. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it did lift her right up. And I, you know, she was so devastated. And I said, but we're going to have joy every day. She was like, okay. It's like, okay, well, we'll see. <laughs> and we really did. And so, you know, how the kids say on TikTok, you know, I understood the assignment. And so, you know, one of the funniest things, you know, about that is, you know, I did the assignment just as I promised her I would. And I'm so, you know, proud of that. And, you know, uh, AARP has those um, caregiver little snippets that they do. And so they all these caregivers have names. And in my case, mine was the entertainment director. And that's so good for this episode because, <laughs> yes. you know, they always have, you know, some kind of little catchy thing. And that clearly defies me because they're like, oh, you all you were always finding something for your mom to do. And that was really it. You know, I know there's a lot of stigma around the disease still. I just wasn't going to embrace that. You know, we sit our loved ones in the corner like, OK, just sit here. We'll take care of everything. But that just shuts them out when mm -hmm. there's still so much they can do and so much they can contribute. And I just wasn't going to do that. So, <laughs> so instead of being in the corner, you know, we were in the forefront of, um, you know, the activities and all the fun things that we did. And, you know, every day is obviously not joyful and I didn't sugarcoat that part either. And so, but one of the things I learned to do was to use the activities to, you know, curb any sort of, you know, of the behavioral challenges and, you know, all that. I just looked at every day as a, as a new day. I was also determined, in addition to not just sitting her in the corner, I was also determined to keep her on as little medicine as possible. Mm -hmm. And she was never on, you know, the Alzheimer's, you know, drugs as they exist. And um, I was very excited about that because the you know, some of the ones that they give you just kind of dope you up and, you know, sit you there and you're staring straight ahead. And I couldn't, stand that either so I was just gonna do the opposite so that's what we did and you know the whole you know 16 years if I had to categorize it you know I would say there were many more moments of joy than they were you know the whole despair mm. kind of thing and yeah there were bad days when she escaped she was the ultimate escape artist <laughs> escaped three times oh wow you know your heart's beating real fast she was determined she was going to go back to dc and that's what i get for moving her out of dc <laughs> which i could not afford by the way and so those things were you know obviously horrible but you know for the most part we really did live into that joy thing mm. Well, and, and I think it's so neat how you have continued to honor her 
and her legacy and her memory by continuing mm-hmm. to spread joy through yes. your advocacy and training uh, and the work that you do. And um, I just admire you so much for that. And it, it, you know, you very well could have, you know, uh, taken the opposite approach, but I love mm-hmm. that you approach it mm-hmm. with joy uh, and that you found creative ways to bring yeah. meaning and purpose and uh, fun into her day to day life. And uh, when you talk about it, you just light up. And, <laughs> and so I love I love the opportunity to get to chat with you all about meaningful engagement, because yeah. to your point earlier, uh, it does help with things like the dementia related behaviors and can it help does. as you care for your loved ones. So I thought it could be helpful to kind of talk through the benefits of kind of meaningful engagement and why it's so important. So do you maybe want to expand upon that a little bit, Loretta? Sure. I think, you know, as long as we, you know, sort of continue a lot of the things they always, you know, like to do that keeps them, you know, engaged and, you know, active and, you know, just really focused. I always want people to focus on, you know, what's right in front of them and you know it can really lift their spirits you know keep them from um being sad you know i'm all about mood alteration (laughs) you know kind of thing and so anything we can do with them i'm also a big fan of not doing things for them but doing it with them i think that is so important what is the sense of them sitting there watching us do stuff you know how about we do it together so that was honestly one of the most important things for me that we did it together you know um and so i try to teach other caregivers how to do that too because it's so stimulating you know there's still so many you know parts of their brain that work and so watching the results of what they can create with just a little, you know, help from us is, you know, really amazing, you know, for me. So that's one of the several of the things I really like about the engagement piece. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. It's it's stimulating cognitively and um, it, it, also it, I also can help boost their confidence. Uh, it, it really is things that they didn't, you know, forget. Like, oh, you know, he says, well, mom, you used to be an artist. You're like, I did. And then you (laughs) watch some of that, you know, come out. And sometimes, you know, I've worked with caregivers whose parents really did exhibit things in museums. And then now they, in their current state, you know, can still create. It might not be as elaborate as what they used to do, but it's, you know, what they can do then. And I think that's really so important to just kind of you know, keep it going. And, you know, my mom used to be in this sewing group called the Saturday Stitchers. And every year they would do, (laughs) and their color was pink and everything was pink, pajamas and, you know, suits you wore to work, everything was pink. And um, I kept going with the pink, even though, you know, when, you know, she couldn't sew anymore. Of course, that would have been way too dangerous. But I bought little teeny pink Lego pieces and, we made these things that looked like embroidery on a little Lego plate and I saved it. And, you know, I did a little art show uh, last year in Ocean City, Maryland with um, another group and people loved it. I had a little tag that she had made it and because their colors were pink and so it had little flowers and buttons and it was just the coolest thing. And she was so proud of it, as proud as she had been in all the beautiful very uh, detailed things that she had uh, sewn herself. And so, you know, just a transitioning of, you know, well, you can't do that anymore, but how about we do this instead? Yay. Mm-hmm. It's, and so you get that, buy, you get that buy-in and it's cool. So yeah, it, it is, it is really a neat thing to kind of adapt things the way they can currently do it. Absolutely. I think that that's a big piece of it is, um, it is. is figuring out, okay, where are they now? Maybe adjusting your expectations, yes. adjusting the activity. You might need to break it down in a few more steps or yes. give simple instructions kind of one at a time instead of sitting the project down in front of them and saying, have at it. <laughs> that's so cool. And it's so funny because I sell puzzles, you know, two and four piece, you know, puzzles that have a pattern right so when they get it it's like a block of this pattern and no matter how you move the two or four um, lego pieces around it makes a whole totally different pattern so sometimes people will write me and say oh i didn't get any instructions (laughs) that's (laughs) no purpose (laughs) 
because, you know, I, I hate when we as adult children sometimes say, that's not how you do it, mom. Let them do it how they want to do it. And here's the thing. I have learned so much from patterns I would never have thought of. You know, I've been looking at all the st- symmetrical patterns that, you know, have these wonderful shapes. And they doing this off the wall kind of stuff. You're like, oh, never would have thought of that. Whether they moved it, you know, two spaces up or down or around. And they love it. They smile like, oh, who? And so that's where there are no, no instructions because I don't want that to, you know, sort of put them in this box of this yeah. is what they have to do, which is why my mother never got me the sets, the Lego sets when I was little to build a train or a plane or automobile. She bought the sets with the mixed pieces so we could build whatever we wanted. And so that's what I try to pass on, you know, to families because you have no idea when you know, when they get together, or when we do this as an activity, what's going to come out of it? I'll take pictures and send it to their adult, you know, kids. And I get back, my dad built that, you know, especially the sons. Oh, my dad can still do that. So, yeah, it's uh, uh, no instruction zone, as I like to say. <laughs> that allows for so much creativity yes. uh, to flow. And I think what's it's also awesome. so neat is you've been talking about like the person living with dementia and their family member and activities can be a great way to form connections too with your loved one. Cause sometimes you might think, what am I going to talk about? Especially exactly. if their memory uh, isn't in a spot where they can really um, carry on a conversation or reminisce like they once were able to, but activities can be a great way to build connections uh, exactly. amongst family and intergenerational connections too, which I love. And that's, you know, that's my favorite. And, you know, we had talked about this, you know, once before with the We See game, their whole, you know, uh, mission is all about connections. No matter what box you buy, they have these boxes. Uh, that, there was an original box, We See, which, of course, means uh, yes, yes, in French and Spanish. But when you just say, you know, this is what we see in these. So it's just a deck of cards. Imagine a deck of 210 cards you know, kind of things. And in the old, the, the original set, um, it was just pictures of, you know, pieces of buildings, steel fences, keys, you know, all kinds of odd things. Like, what is this? But that's exactly what they want you to do. Well, Lakeland, what do you see in this card? Oh, I see, you know, something. And, but if your grandchild is also there or your mom or whomever, and everybody sitting around the table, everybody sees something different. Yeah, oh, and neat. so it's all about the connection. Then a couple of years ago, they came out with We See Nature. So here's the little nature piece. This is Arches in um, uh, Arizona, I think it is. Utah, Utah. I went there. There you go. And what's cool about the last two editions that did not uh, exist in the first edition, there's now a, a code. Go the right way, little brother. Um, it was a code that now when you scan it, you get a whole... Um, you know, description of it, you know, who took the picture, oh, information about where it is, all that. You can learn everything you want to know. So a lot of schools are using it now as educational pieces. But imagine the discussion about it, especially if they've been there. So that might trigger a, a memory. Oh, we went there in 1969. Like, yay. And so all these things. So you get to know who took the picture and all that. And then the third one is um, about the Getty Museum. So it's all for art lovers. As a matter of fact, I tried to get one <laughs> a couple months ago. And there's like, we have limited limited quantities on this. We'll have more in, you know, in the summer. So that must be really popular. But it's a, the whole thing is about creativity and connections. And I think that has to be our, you know, focus in, you know, you know, caregiving, because, you know, you want to have something meaningful to do. Um, they can, one of the ways to find out where they are, you know, in their state at, at the moment is, what connections are they making? What are we seeing that they don't see, and what are, that they don't see, and what are they seeing that we don't see? Mm. And so, and I do that with families with the Lego bricks as well. So I, I think we learn a lot if we're paying attention about you know what's going on in their mind at the moment. And I think one of the things, if I have one big piece of advice for you know caregivers about activities and meaningful engagement, and that is you know don't give up. Mm, you know, yeah. uh, and that's why you don't spend a lot of money <laughs> because <laughs> you know I spent forty nine ninety nine on that game that Loretta suggested and it didn't work at all. And you know 
but tomorrow you get it out tomorrow today they might have no interest on it like, mm, what is this i don't like this and then tomorrow you get it on it's like hey let's try this and so you know i always say that which works today may not work tomorrow and i i sort of equate it for people remember when your kids were little and now you're experiencing this they have the pacifier the favorite pacifier the next favorite pacifier the third favorite pacifier yes. and you got them all in your bag when you go out right and it's the same thing i had a whole bag of activities in my car, literally. And I didn't take it out. It was still in there six months after she died because I didn't know who else I might run into who would need something. And I had all kinds of things in there and I just kept pulling stuff out of the bag until one worked, whatever our definition of work is. Yeah. And so you, uh, that's the people say, oh, yeah, I hadn't thought that, you know, try it again. Once, sometimes once somebody doesn't want to do an activity, they give it away or sell it or something. Or donate one day says, I just donated everything to the library. I was so upset. I'm like, you go to the library, get your stuff back. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, you just don't give up. Just keep, you know, trying different things. And so I do a lot of one on work one work with especially couples who, as they move into that middle to later stage, mm. you know, have become frustrated with a lot of things. And I like, you know, just keep, you know, trying. And uh, I went to one lady's house and she, I met her at a, a Panera Bread for breakfast. I met her at some conference and you could see she was at her wits end, mm. literally. And she saw on TV that we lived in the same town. So she asked me, you know, would I come to her, her house? But first we went to Panera Bread. We sat through breakfast and lunch. But she looked like a totally different person when she left. And I agreed to go to her house. When I went to her house, she said, he isn't. Gonna, he doesn't do any activities. He follows me around even to the bathroom. I don't have a minute's peace. He won't sit still for a minute. I took the first picture of him. I poured out, you know, maybe 30 Lego bricks on the table. I took the first picture of him at 9.59 a.m. He never moved. From that table, the phone rang, everything. She said, he jumps up the minute the phone rings. <laughs> he didn't move an inch. I had to go at a, you know, at 11. He was still at the table. She went outside. She talked wow. to the neighbors. She did. They were putting together a swing set next door. She stood out and watched that. She came back. He's still in the same seat. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he just built it, built it, built it. I'm like, I got to go. I left the Lego bricks. The, and just a, there was a picture of her doing this. Like. What I'm and you know, respite is such a big thing. So that hour she just could sit Relax. back in the chair, like he's really doing something. And apparently she had bought a lot of activities and he knocked them on the floor and things and they people were concerned that he was becoming, you know, a little aggressive. But um I guess that went away and I left the little bucket of um you know bricks with them and I check on them every now and then because they only lived, you know, ten minutes or so for me. But that was fabulous for me to watch and so yeah. it's so encouraging when people are willing to try something new and see what happens yeah well I think you make a great point a meaningful engagement can also be a, a form of respite for yes. a family member so that they can get a few things done around the house and um, I yes. think that's so interesting that you know you just sat down that that little tub of Lego bricks and he was just creating and making those connections and um I think that goes right back to your point. You got to try different activities and see right. what works. And I love that you incorporate Legos. I know that's a big part of how you bring it joy is. to so many people. It is. Loretta, why Legos? I'm just, can you tell everyone, like, what is it about Legos that makes everyone so excited? Because I know uh, a while back, you and I even did a Lego activity and it was so fun. Was I love fun. putting together the pieces and it I absolutely it's just, was. It's just a blast. Fun. It is. So, you know, it was just, you know, everybody has their thing growing up. And that was our thing. We used Lego in good times and bad. You know, I got all A's in my poor car. We built with Legos. My mother had a bad day at work. We built with Lego. And that was our thing. And one of the things I noticed today, we would call it depression. When I was a teenager, mm -hmm. I noticed my mom was what I guess I would say, you know, sad a lot. But whenever you got those Legos out, we could just talk. I, it my mother's very was very different from Loretta. She was not a people person. <laughs> if I hadn't been born at home, I would have show. I would have thought sure they brought home the wrong baby from the hospital. But, but I was <laughs> anyway. So she just talked freely, and I say to, what I say to people is Lego helped my mother find her words. Mm. And then when the dementia started to progress, it kept the frustration down. So when you know. She was trying to talk about something and she couldn't remember the word. So this was like a ball 
and she couldn't remember the word ball. She was like, that thing, that thing right there, you know what I'm talking about. And she would get really frustrated. So I would just give her a couple of little Lego bricks and she would put them together. And then she would say, ball. Wow. And it was you know, amazing to watch that. So I, as a fast talker, fast everything person, I just had to wait and not finish her sentences and let her do it. And that's all about, you know, the humility and preserving their dignity and all that. Don't always finish their sentences and everything. So that Lego thing could do everything for us. So um, she had so much fun doing it and all of that. And 2014 was not a, the best of years. That was the year she forgot who I was. Mm. And so I had been watching this Lego thing out of uh, headquarters in Denmark called Lego Serious Play. And it was designed for corporations to improve, um, build better strategic plans, business plans, all these business kind of things. And in Lego's case, they were trying to overtake Mattel as the number one toy company. So trying to see how we can communicate more effectively, work better together, all this kind of stuff. And so, but I was watching it for a totally different reason. I wanted to use it with my mom. And the whole premise of it is you give them a task and then they build it of their um Part of how they interpret the task and then they share the story of what they built but what's really funny is that the deeper they go into dimensions like this is me growing up in 1939 and we went on our <laughs> first date to um um i don't know but we had fun yay you know? <laughs> so they forget half the story but i don't care and so and some of them don't forget the story and some of them tell stories that people you know, in their families that never heard wow. something about 1949 it's crazy and I, i've had nine people in the last six years talk again after years of not talking wow and just uh, two weeks ago i met this woman online and she wanted to make sure she was going to visit you know her sister and she and the niece were clashing about how to deal with the sister in terms of activities so she bought some things and showed me online did that about the right thing i'm going there you know and i was camping this weekend <laughs> But she sent me a text and said, oh, Loretta, my niece is in tears. Her mother, you know, hadn't been talking, you know, and she talked. So I read it real fast, like, oh, my God, I was so excited for her because it, it was pretty tense, you know, situation. She was worried about going and they had so much fun. And, and she said, Auntie, I wish I had let you bring the Legos before. Mm. Never say never. <laughs> and so, you know, when you're thinking it's childish and all that, well, you know, try it before you, you know, you know doesn't think it could be helpful. And so that was how, you know, it sort of played out. But my mom had always taught us that if you find something that works, you, you, um, you know, share it with other people. And so I started doing it both as, you know, a respite for caregivers alone or what we call a memory cafe where they're building things together. So I have three of those coming up this week wow. where they'll be building together. And it's amazing to see some of the things they come up with based on the topics I give them. And so some families uh, want to accomplish something like a uh, legacy. What's our legacy? What was, you know, your loved one's um, greatest contribution to the world kind of mm -hmm. thing. And you leave and you, the kids listen, everybody watches the story because it's not about, um, you know, what the the story per se is how they show it on their little lego model they point to the different things and this is just one of the physics toys always used in the car and had different patterns that match up as you can see and they kept my mom very encaged even just riding around so i want to just hear the story that um they will tell so that was how lego became our thing and it became so much more our thing with dementia i i would say you know it was kind of our our medicine, you know, that's, yeah. you know, that was the drug I was willing to do for her <laughs> was, you know, sort of the play. We forget to play. And yeah. as devastating as that disease is, you should certainly need some play time. That's, that's how I equate it. Wow. That's, thank you for sharing how Legos became um, such a big part of your life and mm -hmm. uh, for sharing those stories. How incredible. I know people talk about like music opening up parts of the brain, yes. uh, but who who would have ever thought Legos could open up a part of the brain too? But I think it all goes right. back to kind of that creativity, uh, yes. the arts. Uh, so many people uh, think, oh, my dad would have never touched, you know, a paintbrush right. before he had dementia. But right. it, it also all goes back to that kind of, uh, 
open mindedness of, well, let's just try it and see. And, and sometimes family caregivers are so amazed that, yeah, the dad picked up the paintbrush and is painting actually some really beautiful things. Uh, and it surprised the whole family. So, uh, I love, uh, kind of your perspective of just try it. Yeah. What's the worst that could happen? It doesn't work. Okay. We'll try tomorrow. See, uh, but give it a try. Very rich. And see, your point is so well taken because, and now that you have a son, what's really funny. Remember when our parents put that all the ugly stuff we made up on the refrigerator when we were little. Well, yeah. I have, you know, talked some memory care places, you know, if there's a blank wall on the way to the dining room or the activity room, fill that wall with some of the things that they did. Now they put little placards of who made it and everything. And here's the cool thing about Legos. If they make like a Lego wall or you put everybody's little thing up, um, the great part about it is when they are walking by, they can change it because we don't feel the same way every day. You could take that piece off and put it somewhere else or get whole new pieces and put it up. But I think the, the fact that we, if we have the opportunity to display some of what they do, that goes back to what you were saying earlier about not only honoring the work that they might have done in the past or it was their favorite hobby or whatever it was, but it is certainly confirms for them whatever they can relate to um i'm still valued i can mm -hmm. still contribute a lot so when you walk down the corridor and, and like look honey that's the one i did oh great job dad why don't you get a hug and all that and i think it's so important to you know continue to um, inspire them and comfort them, you know, in a way that they did for us. Because, you know, you know, when people come over for dinner, you know, and that is like the ugliest picture, you know, ever, but they're so proud of it because, you know, your kid did that. And we, you know, everybody's refrigerator is full with you know, magnets and all these things. And so I thought that was one of the greatest, you know, ways to, you know, honor people. And so, you know, Legos may not be everybody's thing but find what that thing is yes. because I, I have never said you know legos is the only way people are very surprised when they try and they're like wow that was a lot more powerful than i thought it would be and i've had three generations building together i had five generations building together wow. which was on tv yeah that was crazy five generations unbelievable and so the act of just getting together and including that you know, person. And I, I think one of the things we didn't talk about is, you know, just not doing it too long. The guy that did it for more than an hour, that was kind of shocking for his first time. But, you know, just a limited chunk of time until they, you know, half hour, start with that and see what happens, you know. And, um, you know, just trying not to force, you know, the issue because you do want to make it fun. Yeah. And so as long as it, whatever, it, you know, the thing is, as long as it's fun, you know, it's cool. Yeah. And I like things you can do in the car and, um, you know, carry easily. So things that are A, not expensive and B, uh, things that are easily transportable. If you still want to take your loved one out to, you know, somebody else's house or to a park, you know, have things you can put in a little bag. And so you're not just sitting there, although sitting there is cool too, if there's something to see. Right. But, um, it's, um, you know, just kind of all you, what you make of it, the the different activities, just being present. So, and don't sit that <laughs> the activity out there and you be on your phone the whole time while <laughs> they're engaging. Because then you're going to miss something. My phone is always out, but that's because I'm taking pictures of what they're doing, especially if I'm working with somebody whose, you know, loved one couldn't be there or something like that, as I said earlier. So, but it really is about, you know, being physically present and really affirming what it is that they're doing. And, you know, that can be just so fulfilling, you know, to it. So, yeah, that's just. I, I, I love all of that so much. And, and you mentioned activities that you can take on the go, uh, yeah. that you can put in a bag, you can keep in your car. Loretta, what are some of those activities that you always oh, have man. on hand? Oh, so I have these, um, the dot art, uh, those are really cool. And those are magic. And like, this is a good picnic kind of thing. Um, and that's just really what it's called. Dot a dot art. Dot but a dot it's, art. And look, it's got a little <laughs> handle and everything. So you can go to things, stick some index cards or some paper in there and you know they can really do it this is you can it can make it really pink this is a pink piece of cardboard almost uh cardstock and i just did you know four little colors and that took me two minutes to do and you know you can ooh and ah about that it's sitting in the park and you know all kinds of you know things like that and so i have all bags of anything fidget like 
This was one of my mom's, you know, favorite. This was from the Davos Sack website. I met those ladies on a um, webinar thing. We got to be friends. And, you know, they love how it changes when you touch it. And the back was, you know, something you can just the run textures. your fingers over. Yeah, I love those. Those are and really neat. They are. And then, like, again, you throw it in the bag, you get there. And, you know, some things I was very cognizant of where we were going, the activity that I chose. I do have things that click and make noise, um, not really aggravating them, but it does make noise. So if we were going to a doctor's appointment, obviously I wouldn't do that. Um, but whatever things they could find, my mother loved these, these little fidget things. And again, you can match up the colors, but she would do this in the car, in the car, in the car. And, you know, we um, really have, you know, lots of fun with that. Also, and I, I, I will tell the very short story about how these ended up on my website. I had made this for my mom because she used to read everything out loud. And that is not what you want in a doctor's office. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Uh, I learned that the hard way, you know, you'd be in Walmart and she's like, KO pectate for diarrhea. And I was like, oh. I said, that is the fastest way to clear an aisle at Walmart, but okay. And so I was like, hmm, what am I going to do so that, you know, she loved to read, but you cannot read in the doctor's office because the people will be mad at us. Anyway, we could hear, and it was right after COVID was um, ending and people were going back to um, in-person appointments and we couldn't see it, but there was a loud uh, gentleman yelling and screaming and using bad language. And his daughter was like, stop, dad, dad, stop. And so they had to ask them to leave because um, I, I guess he was throwing stuff or whatever too. So as they were coming out, she's kind of pulling her dad along and my mom is sitting there doing this thing. And he makes this beeline over to my mother and he tries taking it from her. Mm. And they said, stop, dad, stop. And But he, my mother gives it to him. And he just stands, he never says another word. All that ruckus, he was, he never says another word. Wow. And she says, can I buy that from you? How much is, where did you get that? You know, and I and she says, where did you buy that? I said, oh, I make these. She said, oh my God, what do you want for it? What do you want for it? I said, my mother gave it to him. I had more in the car, of course. <laughs> I was like, you can have it. And she was like, oh my God. And all the way to the elevator. They could have gone back into the appointment. Wow. Because he never said another word. And she got all the way to the elevator. And she turned around and said, you need to sell these. And that's how it all started. Wow. <laughs> that's incredible. And he, I mean, you to go from a hundred back down to zero is yeah. usually the other way around. Right. And, you know, I didn't know what had happened back there, but we could certainly hear it. But all, and if that's what it takes, you know, it's again, that right pacifier thing, you get the baby to stop crying, you find the right pacifier kind of thing. And I, that was wow. That was a wow moment for me because I never intended to, make this a product ladder or anything. I was just trying to be considerate of other people who yeah. were going to be in the doctor's office and things like that. And so I think we make these solutions to what our current challenges are. Absolutely. Well, and I think so many family caregivers are fearful of going out in public for yes. reasons like that. They don't yes. want their loved one to uh, get upset or to disturb other people. So if you can yeah. find activities that they enjoy doing yes. that can keep them occupied, um, yeah. it can it can open up a caregiver's world a little bit and allow it them is. to get out and about. Yeah, we did coloring in and in, there was a, in a little bag, a smaller little coloring book, you know, thing. If you're going to be somewhere where they had to just use their lap. So anything that, you know, fits on their lap. And then there's so many things, you know, out there for that. But again... I would not spend, you know, a lot of money. And at the group home where my mom lived, one of the funniest things that happened after my mom moved in and the woman says, so tell me one thing about your mother. I need to know that isn't on the application form. And uh, I was like, oh. And so, you know, she said, what did she do for a living? She was a secretary. And she said, uh, anything I need to know about that? Yeah. If mail disappears, you know, <laughs> she might be, you know, hiding it somewhere. She was sorting the mail. So I bought her a 99 cent thing at the dollar store of just a little slotted, you know, little metal things that, you know, sit yeah. on the desk and they would give her all the junk mail and every day. She'd be sorting and when it. People would come in. She would hand them a stack of mail. Here's your mail. They're like, thank you. And, you know, they put it back. She'd do it all over again. 99 cent. 99 wow. cent and fun activity. This is what she did for 30 years. Gave she she um, supported like eight or nine people, and it was all about passing out the mail and signing them up for conferences and doing all kinds of things. And so that's what she remembered that that's what she did. So you know, again, you adapt it. But I didn't spend 10.99. I spent 99 cent. And so think about 
what you're purchasing and, you know, um, how it was related to their past. And yeah. that gives you the more relatable it can be to them, the more success it might have. And I think that's what we have to go after as well. Absolutely. I love that example. I know uh, one of our clients, he was a banker. And so the care, ah. the care professional, he just got like a jar of loose change and they would yes. dump it out on the table and sort all the coins into the dimes, yes. the pennies. That's and they so would do cool. that for hours. And it was meaningful to him. So it I was. love that example of thinking mm-hmm. about, okay, what was their profession? What were their hobbies? How can we adapt it to where yes. they are today to make it a meaningful yes. activity? And, and again, it goes back to giving them purpose. Your mom probably felt such a great sense of purpose. Purpose, sorting did. the mail, uh, and and I bet that brought her a lot of joy. Uh, it in was addition, very cool. She just really loved it, and yeah, everybody, you know, has a past and a story kind of like that. She also made sandwiches for the homeless when she lived in her non-assisted living building. She would walk to the church across the street. So when you know, she always liked doing something. So I would tell the caregivers. You know, when it's time for lunch or something, she'd make a mean sandwich still. So she would cut the little ends off. And she she would count all the potato chips. One. Everybody got 10 potato chips. No more, no less. <laughs> One, two. And every plate, she would do the 10 potato chips. And that's all it was. It was she was so detailed. <laughs> I love that. And that's, that's another great example. It doesn't have to be a a complicated activity. It could even just be things around the house, you know, helping with lunch preparation, maybe folding laundry, uh, maybe setting the table. So all of Mm -hmm. those things can also be a way to meaningfully engage your loved one too. So uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, super fancy or cost a lot. I love that. (laughs) Um, And I know that you know, Loretta, there's so many activities out there. Uh, on the last episode of Caregiver Chats, I um, was on with dementia darling Carrie Alberts, which I yes. know you know her. And we talked about a few other kind of meaningful activities like Zinnia Therapeutic TV. Yes, um, that thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Matador magazine, which you ha- you're in that magazine, aren't you? Merida, yeah, yeah, Marador. Yeah, Marador. Sorry. We did, um, you know, it was a thing about Lego and how we did so there was a picture of you know my mom doing the lego and and i get a lot of you know calls or emails about that uh issue that was something uh in the epoch news as well that very similar i get a lot of calls about how's this lego thing how many bricks do i need and all that kind of thing so mirador was amazing and and um after my mom died i took all of the mirador copies to one of my favorite um, group homes is called JK House of Grace and um, uh, just an amazing place. And they played, I took them and they played a few of the games that are in there and they did some of the activities and she had one, there was some kind of puzzle, I mean, the quiz about World War II. And there was some people there that could answer the questions. I'm like, I don't even what? know that. <laughs> so, oh my God. So we did, while I was still there, I went um, around lunchtime. I stayed a couple hours and they read several issues and most of them could still read and a lot of them could process. And so we, you know, there were things you can cut out of the magazine. That's what I really like. A lot of it is contained in the magazine, what they need. You don't have to Mm. run around the house and find string. I mean, there were some things like that, but a lot of it is self-contained. So that could be one of the things you could take to the park and y'all could talk about it or show some photos and things like that. And so uh, it's an amazing resource. And I and I, I think I told you I was going to Portland and I was so excited because I would be able to meet Nikki Jardin. But that didn't work out because she was going to be somewhere else. She was doing this long walk, uh, several mi- hundred uh, thousand mile walk. Oh, my God. And so she was going to be in London. And then I was in London. So we actually met in London. Oh, in person. how fun. What kind of thing is that? But she talked about, you know, future issues and she's always looking for, you know, big things that sometimes are off the beaten path as well. Yeah, people are like, oh, I would have never thought of that. And so it's, you know, all about, you know, as you said, being open. I remember a recipe in one of her um, things, some kind of summer thing, and just two or three little ingredients, but a lot of fun. So just nothing challenging that's going to be overwhelming for them. And so it is a truly great um, resource. So Yeah, that's- I, I think that's what's kind of neat about uh, the Zinnia TV, uh, yes. that magazine is that it is adapted 
easy plot lines to follow for individuals yes. living with dementia yes. or cognitive impairment because sometimes if you turn on the TV, some of those crime shows or others are very hard to follow or can be yeah. um, agitating to the individual. So those are great options and we'll be sure to link to those in the show notes. And uh, I know that Carrie had mentioned a few others, Nana's books and music with yes. Alexis too. I think we can't forget about music as kind of a, an activity and a meaningful so, engagement opportunity. I'm so glad you mentioned that too, because for the first time I am on the board of a uh, organization called Stories Loves Music. And the short story of it is it started doing um, a hurricane in New York when all the seniors had to go to this, you know, senior center or gym or somewhere uh not their home that's for sure and this couple started playing music for them everybody had lost you know their stuff in the hurricane and and everybody sat and they started playing music every day and all this and so it led to this organization that's a husband and wife and it led to them um, creating a program for caregivers, using music for respite, yeah. right? But also them using it with the person they're caring for. So this Saturday, for the first time ever, <laughs> we are doing a collaboration. So uh, the um, lady's name is Ileana. Love that name. And Ileana and her husband, James, are going to be playing live music and then I'm going to have them build how the, the songs that we have selected make them feel. Oh, how neat. Now, I, I'm going to let you know. Yeah, how please it keep feels. me posted. We are really, we're doing this in Baltimore, Maryland. We're really excited about Hopkins is um, sponsoring it for us. And if, you know, we, and what's really funny is that we both have RVs. So our thing is like, okay, if this takes off, we're going to go around the world <laughs> with our RV. I love it. I love it. I'll come, yeah, I'll make sure to get on to one of your stops and, and come see it. Isn't that fun? And one of the songs, amazingly, and we, we had this obviously Zoom call about the songs we were going to choose. They've written some amazing original music. And the last song, I shouldn't say this one out loud, but one of the songs we chose is um, about you know, like one little thing hanging on a vine and like, hang on, hang on. And it's such a perfect song for caregivers because, yeah. you know, if you one little thing hanging on a vine, you think you're the only one and nobody else is out there. And so the songs are about, uh, the first one's about joy and uh, there's one in the middle and then we're going to end with that. You know, you know how I do this is that at the end, you want to leave them, you know, with something uplifting because if we're doing caregiver yes. respite, I'm focusing on what's challenging them. I get them to build that. But then they, I have them build a solution to the challenge. Oh, I'm so stressed. Oh, this is me. I'm so stressed. And then I'm like, okay, we'll build a solution to your little Oh, I'm going to call Lakeland and see if she wants to go walk around, you know, the park with me. Great. And then I'm going to follow up and see if did you really call Lakeland and then did y'all really go walk around the park. And then we end with some joy. So this with the music, we hope we'll do the same thing. Yeah. You really want to leave them uplifted, but encourage them. Hey, what was that song they played? And if you're not playing music as part of your, what I call caregiver success plan, then, you know, you can add that. So we are really excited about Saturday afternoon and, and to see how it plays out. But we're looking forward to, um, you know, doing that. We've applied a couple of, to a couple of conferences, doing it as a duo, as, as uh, well as doing it, our own individual work, but um, it is really an, an amazing organization. And so, um, you know, love being on their board, but, you know, obviously we do, you know, um, you know, obviously very different things, but to combine them is really going to be something. Yeah. So. That's special. I can't wait to hear how it goes. And <laughs> uh, gosh, we've shared so many great uh, opportunities yes. for engagement. Are there any that I'm leaving out that we haven't gone over uh, that you want families to consider uh, when it comes to meaningful engagement or activities or, um, you know, I, that I had a situation this week um, and I'll just, you know, show it. I know a lot of people know about the robotic dog, but here's the, yes. the, the kind of cat version of it. And, you know, it moves around. Yeah. Look at, look oh, wow. It's so, That's so cute. And he's, and, and he rolls over and his paws move and has, they have, look at that, his real paws. Wow. And and there's a lot of movement and there's a camera in it. It's fairly heavy and there's a camera in there. So when you walk by, his head will turn just like, you know, it's a real, you know, like it's a real cat. 
And so you can, if for people who don't like the sound, they can turn the sound off. You know, the meow- meowing part, yeah. if they don't like that, they can turn that part off. Um, but if if a person, what I am finding from folks is that if their person lived is have to move to a building where they cannot take their beloved animal, this might be a, a thing, you know, to do. And everybody knows about the the dog. Yes, that you know, one is so the same cute. thing. He he barks and all that, but you can turn the sound off. Um, but everybody the same kind of thing. The same, you know, he barks and uh, and this one's maybe a little heavier than the cat. So okay, um, but. That his tail wags. I mean, oh, it is just the coolest thing. That is neat. And so I think, you know, when they have lost so much, mm-hmm. uh, they, you know, their pets, they have to move, they, 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 no pets are allowed. Sometimes that really helps too. And again, you can take that like you take your pet anyway. You can take it to the park or whatever outings you're going to. And there, I've been to a doctor's appointments where somebody bought that pet because the person knows they're getting a shot or something that's going to be uncomfortable oh, and they yeah. wouldn't leave you know, home without it kind of thing. And so I think we just have to, you know, find a lot of things. People talk to it. And so many folks think it's real. So like I've been to a couple of nursing home kind of places where all of these little pets are sitting out on the counter. Like, yeah, we took them for a walk. Here you go. And so my mother thought it was, and we didn't have any pets when I was little, but my mother loved that dog. And I have a zillion pictures of her with it. And um, she would always say, he's moving. And then, you know, she would always ask, and then, just to say where they were on a different thing. He's not going to pee on me, is he? No, I just took him out. Like, there you go. So, <laughs> oh. so they get so, you know, attached. And whatever it is that keeps them call. And sometimes she would look around, like, what's she looking for? And she's like, where's my friend? I can't think of his name. And then I, you would know he was talking about the, you know, the little dog. And so, you know, he would get the dog out. And, then, and you know, again, you know, if, if the sound is going to bother people with the barking, because if you're not paying attention to it, if it's idle for a long time and it is turned on, it'll start to, you know, bark like, OK, I'm still here. He's like, oh, <laughs> Don't forget about me. <laughs> And you're like, oh, just like a real animal. I, want, I need somebody to pet me. And so but really, it's just about them being you know, calm and, you know, sort of at peace with their current, you know, situation. So however we can address that, I think that's cool. The only, uh, I guess, challenge with that, that's probably one of the pricier things we have talked about today. There is a a bird, which I showed you earlier, which doesn't, I don't know how to shut it off. So (laughs) it burps the whole day. It's loud. So yeah. And, but a lot of people have that. It's, it, it is amazing. The bird is, is really amazing. It does a lot of different things anyway, but that's the cheaper version of that. So um, what a lot of times people do, if there are multiple people living together, they just kind of share it. Yeah. So you know, that can be a pricey thing. But there's some um, respite organizations that give those away as well. So something to look into if your person was a pet, a pet lover and no longer has their pet. Absolutely. And I know uh, the company is called Joy for All Pets, and we'll be sure to it is. link to that it in the is. show notes was, as well. I met them at On Aging last year, and they were amazing. And I, it, what was funny about it, just to tell you how people stand behind their products, I had traveled with the dog so much that the sound stopped. I think TSA, <laughs> no offense to them, I think they dropped my bag and it stopped barking. And so um, I wasn't able to demo it like I wanted to. And I mentioned that to the, I was next to him. Uh, at the conference and he the next day when he got back to the office he sent me the dog a new dog the cat oh, that's and the awesome. bird. And so I was like wow that's what you call customer service but I had a lot of pictures he was so impressed I had a lot of pictures of my mom with the dog oh that's special <laughs> so it was very good but I love that customer service because yes. honestly if you know you bought that so they could have a little friendly engagement and it stopped working. It's still fine to hug. But if the point was it to bark and other things, yeah. I couldn't believe how fast. I don't know if he overnighted. I don't know what he did, but <laughs> I got it. You know, we were you know not at home. So it came the, the first day I got home, which was amazing. And so I love not only finding things that work, but also, you know, groups, you know, like the folks at Davos Sag that stand behind their products and things as well. Absolutely. Because... You know, when they start to lose their mobility, obviously it's going to drop or all of that. And so we have to be really aware of, you know, the longevity of these kinds of things that we have. So like that, we see card game is 210 cards. If you lose one, there's no, you know, nobody knows. You don't remember what all the cards are. And there's no, you know, it's not like a deck of cards where it's 
you know, four of everything, four right. suits. It's not like that. You can play whatever. If you, if you lost a few or you know, they threw it away or whatever, you still got, you know, 209 to work with. And yeah. so, you know, it's, I, and I like that because there's, there's, you know, like a lot of activities, if you lose one piece to the puzzle, you can't do it anymore. So mine, that's why they don't have patterns. You can use two pieces. You can use all four pieces. You can move it all around. And if you only, you know, if something comes apart or something, you can still use it. And so I think, we need to consider all of those kinds of things, not only time of day that you start an activity, but, you know, how uh, much will it stimulate them and, and not uh, make their agitation progress. So I'm very careful about even working with families, what time I start an activity. That's you want to do point. things after like three o'clock or something like that. And so most of the things, even the thing I'm doing on Friday, I think it's uh one thirty to three. And that's probably like the cutoff, yeah. you know, for families to, to be together and activity. And we chose that time, you know, with a purpose. And so, you know, just a lot of things to consider, but just, you know, just keep it so it's not overwhelming because that defeats the whole purpose of them having fun. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, Loretta, thank you so much for sharing so many of the great tips. If people wanted to find out more about you, to find some yes. of the great items that you uh, sell or, or um, are connected with, how sure. can they find you? So it, it is really easy. It is um, LorettaVini.com. And so that is my website and it has all of the speaking topics I do. I speak a lot about joy. I speak about engaging activities, um, all kinds of things. No, like that. That's all there. Then there is the shop portion where they can get my books and um, all these crazy puzzles that I make. And so uh, I don't know why my brain works like that. It is like some of the things I create. I'm like, wow. And so um, but I like seeing the wow in other people, you know, too. And I I think one of the most interesting things is um, being able to make modifications, too. I went to a, a nursing home in London to meet a friend's uh, mom, as they call them there. And I had given her one of my puzzles just as to her to try it out. And she had macular degeneration, so she could uh-huh. not see all of the colors. Well, later, we went to a coffee shop across the street. I had, a, you know, I always had Legos with me. So I plucked off all the colors she couldn't see and put new ones on that I knew she could see. And oh, so her birthday great. was the following week. They wrapped it up after I replaced all the pieces and they sent me pictures of her playing with it and for her 90th. That she had a big party for her 90th birthday and she loved me. And so they said, this is from the red. Ah! And, but the fact that I was able on the spot to make modifications yeah. to it, she, she didn't have dementia at all. Sharp as a tack. But I felt bad because she said, what color is that? I can't see that. And I'm like, what? And so I learned a lot. So again, just being able to tailor it and just a smile on her face, even the pieces that she could see. And she moved it all around and had a good time. But I love that. Um, and not getting upset. Well, she didn't like it or, you know, she couldn't see the stuff. Just try to change it in a yeah. way that will make it adaptable for me. So I, I think I put that story on my website, but it was it was really cool. That's and so amazing. just being able to make people smile. Absolutely. Well, Loretta, as sm- I'm smiling ear to ear, and I'm sure people that are listening are doing the same. You, again, just yeah. bring so much joy. And I have had a total blast talking with you and connecting. And uh, it's just always good to see you, my friend. And you I appreciate too. And you know, I love talking to you, too. And thank you so much for having me. And uh, I hope your listeners will enjoy it. Oh, I know they will. Thanks yeah. again, Loretta. Thank you so much for tuning in to this special video episode of the Caregiver Chats podcast. If you want to subscribe to the podcast and catch up on all the other great episodes, you can find Caregiver Chats in your favorite podcast app. We'll also include some links to Apple and Spotify in the description below. Thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to take good care of yourself while you care for others.